Welcome to the Upstate CFO Council. This organization was founded in 2019 by Robert Bendetti in order to provide a networking and educational forum for senior financial executives to share best practices, to discuss current financial issues, and to learn about current topics related to the performance of their job. Roy Ost, thank you, sir, for doing this. How are you? I'm doing great, Robert. How about yourself? I am doing fantastic, and I'm really excited to get to talk to you. This is, uh, this is fun. Um, there's a lot of folks, I think, in the Charleston and the Upstate CFO Council that don't know you, and they're going to have the pleasure of getting to at least virtually meet you now. So thank you, sir. My pleasure. I've had the pleasure of meeting a couple of them when I went to your axe throwing in Greenville and a couple of your meetings up in Charleston, but you're right, I don't know most of them. Well, Roy Austin is an author, he's a speaker, he's a coach, a business coach. I love that term, not a consultant, a coach. Uh, before that, he was the CFO of J.D. Powers and Company. When I, that's when I knew you. DJ Powers. DJ, DJ Powers. oh my gosh. DJ Powers. Yeah. Thank you. And before that, senior financial executive with manufacturing and chemicals companies. I think it was uh, Eden, Easton? Eastman Eastman Chemicals. Chemicals. Eastman, Eastman Chemicals, Chemicals. and uh, has an undergrad in economics from Bethany College, Correct. Correct. a MBA from Michigan State, Correct. CPA and CMA. Mm -hmm. I believe you were on the IMA board for a while, right? I'm on their small business committee. And a super volunteer and a bunch of organizations. But the one thing I think a lot of people don't know is that Roy Austin is the founder of the Savannah CFO Council, the OG who started it all. When I was in Savannah, I went to the Savannah CFO Council and I stole every single good idea you ever have. <laughs> when I moved to South Carolina, I stole it, totally don't give you credit, and created the Charleston and the Upstate CFO Council. Uh, you, so thank you. <clears throat> well, and you did a fabulous job with, <laughs> excuse me, both Charleston and, and Greenville. And the Savannah Council has learned a lot from what you've done. So it's been a really great to, to get some new ideas and new ways of doing things uh, for us. Well, you're very kind. And uh, I really enjoyed getting to hang out and go to the CFO Councils. When I was to Savannah, uh, I didn't know anybody and I got to network and it was I got education. Uh, it was awesome. And you even have CPE. I think I got CPE. I'm too lazy to do that. I'm not doing that. So God bless you. <laughs> Nobody in the upstate or C, uh, Charleston CFO. Don't get any ideas. I'm not doing it. Uh, but uh, Roy, let's get into this. Question number uno. What is your favorite business book and why? Well, uh, outside my own book. <laughs> 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 Shameless plug for the alligator business. <laughs> but um, one of my all-time favorites is E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. Um, for small businesses, I think it really paints an unbelievable picture of what it's like to be in a small business and, and a lot of great ideas on how that you can improve and prosper. But I'm going to add a second one in there, Robert, which I really just started, uh, I, I just finished just recently. Uh, and it's what got you here won't get you there. Um, one of the best books that I have ever seen, to, if you want to improve your personal relationship, which is the primary theme of this thing, um, you know, all of us have positive aspects uh, in our personalities, in our career, in our lives, uh, but we also have some negative. Uh, so how can we improve on those negatives so that we can get better as managers or employees or CEOs or CFOs or whatever. Um, the guy's name is Marshall. I can't remember his last name, but what got you here won't get you there. That's good. That's good. I'll have to check that out. I mean, I've, I've, I've read hundreds of business books, so it's hard to pick out. There's a lot of them that are in the and I would probably put those two at the top of the list. Question number two, what is the best business advice that you have ever received? Well, when you sent this to me, you didn't say business advice. You just said best advice. And then you sent me the script. So I'm, I want to mention 
two things that I learned from my father. Um, the first was, I remember him making a comment that said, the true measure of a man, and I, he was talking to me and his son, so it applies to women just as well. So the true measure of a man is someone who can admit he's wrong and learn from his mistakes and come. Uh, that has served me extremely well. I've made plenty of mistakes. Um, but I find that uh, if you're willing to admit the fact, I mean, a lot of times I see people that struggle with things because they're not willing to admit to themselves that they made a mistake. They're, they're rationalizing, and then it kind of festers and builds up inside. Um, the other thing I learned from my father was not something he said, but just by watching it. Dad treated everybody. It didn't matter if it was the janitor, the cleaning lady, the CEO, the VP of finance, whatever. He treated everybody the same. He treated them with respect. He <clears throat> talked to them and developed relationships with them. Um, and, I, you know, from that I began to realize uh, we're all the same. And as you know, I've, uh, I've you know, done a little bit of traveling. Um, I spent some time in Vietnam. I recently came back from Africa about a year and a half ago and in five countries in East Africa. And the biggest takeaway is people are all the same. Uh, they have different cultures. They have different habits. They have different customs. But when it boils down to the basic human characteristics of we all have loves, hates, likes, and dislikes, we have uh, preferences, uh, we have goals, we have aspirations. People all over the world are the same in that regard. I had a friend of mine say uh, he was convinced that the coronavirus was a Chinese wep you know, weapon of mass disruption that went awry. There was a conspiracy theory out there, and I guess anything is possible. But his rationale was, he said, they place lesser value on human life. And I thought, I'll bet if you walked into some family in China or India or anywhere else in the world, they value their family just as much as you do. Yeah, that's good. That's good advice. And you, you had a wise dad. That was, uh, that was uh, some really fantastic advice. And I think you're right. I've noticed uh, I'm a car guy. I like watching car videos. and and watch YouTube videos about car guys all over the world. And you can't watch them and not think, oh, wow, we're all the same. It doesn't matter in, if you're in the Middle East or you're in middle Alabama, you're a guy, you're into cars and you're saving up money to buy new tires or a new part. Like we are all the same. We're just humans. And we have so much more in common than we do have uh, that isn't in common. Well, well as, as you know, I founded a charity after I came back from Africa uh, called Libraries for Kids, where we help rural schools establish libraries. They don't have the internet, they don't have electricity. And so I, and I put out a monthly newsletter on that. And so when, um, when it was last Christmas, I uh, texted my contacts over there and said, well, how do you celebrate Christmas? And I heard from a lot of the head teachers from the schools that we've helped and, and from our fantastic volunteer over there, Francis Monjica. Um, and it's pretty much the same. I mean, eight, Kenya is 80% Christian, so I don't know how the 15% you know, Muslim celebrate, but the Christians pretty much are the same. They uh, kill a goat. Skin it, of course, and roast it over an open fire. Well, the custom is different, but is that really any different than us having a turkey or a ham? They celebrate with a family meal. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Roy, question number three. What is a new habit that you've recently picked up or a new tool that you've recently started using that you have found beneficial? Well, as you know, my wife died a month ago, and um, I'm a tennis player. They've closed the tennis court, so I, I can't go out and hit anything. Um, so one of my 
ways of coping with all this uh, is I've, I've started walking a whole lot more. Uh, Sharon always, you know, I, I would play tennis three or four times a week, but in between I didn't do anything. And she was always encouraging me to walk. So I can hear her every day saying, get up off the top and get down there. So I'm up to five to six miles a day. Uh, so that's helped me in a lot of ways. I lost a little bit of weight. Feel better in a lot of ways, and my apologies for that. That was actually a guy in Kenya who was just calling me. Um, he heard so you talking uh, about him. He heard him. I hear, he heard you yeah. talking about him, and he wanted to get in on the conference call. That's right. So, uh, so that's the, probably the, the one new thing. The other uh, is a project that started a year and a half ago. Uh, they got revived, probably because the person who started it had time on their hands. But uh, she had, Heather Bragg, uh, who owns Bragg Media, had contacted myself and Chris Herchavon and Linda Klingman and said, how about if we write up an ebook book to So uh, the, we all had submitted our chapters, and I think, you know, Heather had volunteered to put it all together. And it... Um, just hadn't happened. Well, she kind of, you know, first of April, she revived the project. And of course, the, the chapters were all done. It was just a matter of putting the book together and the graphics and everything. And so here's another shameless plug for uh, the startup. This guy defended. Who says an accountant can't be in sales too? The Startup's Guide to Business. All right, so, Roy, in the notes section of this YouTube video, there's going to be a link to your Alligator Business book and your Library for Kids link so people can learn more about the, the amazing work you do in Africa and this new thing that you're doing. If When it's ready, I'll put that link down in the video too. It's actually ready, and it's just going to be an e-book. And... What I'm doing right now is uh, I, I cut the price of my book in half to try to help small businesses uh, to, uh, you know, because the best thing they can do right now is prepare when the economy reopens. I mean, all those people that told me I don't have time to study mechanic, I don't understand it, I don't understand marketing, I don't have understand. Well, you got plenty of time to learn about all those things now. And so all of that is covered. So I wanted to put that in there. And then I'm offering the ebook, the startup, uh, Startup's Guide to Business, as a free freebie if you buy the book. So uh, right now, the book is available. With, you can get it on Amazon, but you can also get it uh, on my website, which is a better place to get it, um, which is rockwellbusinesssolutions.com. Well, you're the most unretired retired guy I know. <laughs> like, I, I don't think you understand what the definition of retired is. Uh, you are so busy. Like, man, I, I wrote down get off your butt and walk, but you are a go, go, go kind of guy. So you're doing a I, I Every time I talk to you, I feel so lazy. I feel like such a bum. Uh, you got to keep going, Robert, or the Grim Reaper will catch up to you. So. Amen, brother. Amen. And I think that's part of the coping process also. I'm so glad that I have libraries for kids because now I've got something to look forward to and to feel productive on. And I think a lot of people who lose their spouse, you know, they, they kind of sit around the house and, and you know, cherish the memories, of course. But, you know, I had a few pity parties at the first, and that didn't solve anything. <laughs> No, she'd want, she's, I mean, the little I knew about her amazing woman, she'd want you to get out there Absolutely. and, and, and get off your butt and doing what you're doing. So you're doing awesome. Question number four is what is the best part about your job? And you've got like 20, so you get to pick one. <laughs> well, of course, I, I'm blessed to have the freedom to work from home and, uh, not doing a whole lot of coaching anymore. I would if the right situation came came along. But my primary focus is on the libraries for kids. Um, it's 
the project came about, I went to Africa for one reason and one reason only, and that was to see the end. The tour had all these cultural visits to homes and schools and villages and markets and, you know, shooting bows and arrows with the Bushmen and so forth. I didn't care about that. I just wanted to see the animals. And if I got to put up with all this cultural stuff, so be it. But we were in a school uh, in Amboseli National Park, which is uh, a school for a tribe of Maasai. And uh, somebody asked the teacher, do you have a library? Her eyes lit up and she said, no, but we'd love to. Of course, I subsequently learned that in most cases in the rural school, you might have 20 or 30 kids and have to share one textbook. But not only they don't have a library, they don't have textbooks either. And I was so impressed with this uh, tribe of Maasai because they had changed their whole way of life so their kids could get an education. Historically, Maasai are nomadic herdsmen. When the grass gives out, they move their goats and their sheep and their cattle. Well, school buildings can't move. Mm. So they have located more permanently next to where the school is, but that creates a problem. Because now the warriors have to take the herds farther and farther away to graze. Well, in their main settlement, they, they're surrounded by seven foot tall. Uh, fence of acacia thorn branches, and those thorns are about way long, and that's to keep the lions and the leopards out. Well, when the warriors take the herds farther and farther away, and they may be gone two, three, four weeks at a time, they don't have that protection. So, but they were willing, in education was that important to them, that they were willing to change how they did that. So uh, a lot of people told me, forget it, it can't be done. Books are too expensive to ship and they'll get lost in culture. Well, we discovered some less expensive, still expensive, but we discovered some less expensive ways to, to mail the books over there. And apparently there's no black market for used books in Kenya. <laughs> so all the books that I've mailed get through. Uh, so we, we've uh, worked with 11 schools now. I have 20 more on my waiting list. And they're just like us. They're all shut down because of the coronavirus. And uh, so we've got a bunch of schools to, to start shipping to when, when they open back up. That's awesome. That's a great organization. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm proud to know you and know that you're doing that. I think that it's and great way many, to give back. I also want to say many thanks for the contribution from the Charleston CFA Council. Appreciate that. That was awesome. It was, uh, it was a blessing that we were able to make a donation to your charity. Uh, you're, you're having a big impact in young people's lives, and so uh, glad to do it. Question number five. Roy, what is something personal you wouldn't mind sharing with the rest of us uh, about yourself? That's a tough one, Robert. Um, uh, personally, uh, you know, if I'm not working on something, I'm probably on a tennis court. Uh, or Sharon and I just love to travel. We hit all the national parks, the big ones. Uh, we got the last, the, last, the one major one we hadn't been to, we went to Rocky Mountain National Park in Colorado last uh, September. Um, so I love, we love hiking. We've given up camping a long time ago. <laughs> a little too old for that, but um, so those are some of my main interests. I'm an absolutely horrible golfer. Uh, you know, if Sharon really uh, was desperate, she would get me out there. And uh, it just pains me to play, pay that much money for something I'm so bad at. Amen, brother. And I'll tell you, I don't trust an accountant that's good at golf. <laughs> I heard it's, you say that before. Yeah, it takes too much time. And if you, you can't be a good accountant and a good golfer. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and I can't believe, as long as I've known you, that you and I haven't played tennis together. Uh, you know, I knew you played, but I didn't know you played that much. So sometime I'm running through uh, you're part of South yeah, Carolina. Yeah. I might have to pull over and hit the courts with you. You just you don't. Play, uh, you play USTA? Uh, 
I play when, fun time uh, with my friends when I have the time. So yeah. I used to back in the day play like 3035 in Atlanta. Okay, um, okay. So I'm okay, but I, now I play like twice a year. I got kids, you know, so. Um, so you uh, teach them how to play tennis? I tried to. Oh, God, that's a long story. We don't have enough video. For that. <laughs> All right, Roy, Roy, I'm pivoting to question number six. Last question. It happened so fast. Not really. You. This is it. So what didn't I ask that I should have asked? And what is your answer to that? I don't know that there's anything that you didn't ask. Uh... But a question that I get asked a lot, and you kind of referred to it earlier, is, you know, what keeps me going? You know, I'm 76 years old. Most people think I'm crazy for continuing to be as active as I am. And uh, I guess it, I would have to say it's because um, someday on my gravestone, I want them to say, he made it. Uh, and if you're not helping other people, you're really no longer relevant in this world. Um, and my, you know, Sharon said to me, well, they show well, you're relevant to your grandchildren. I said, that's true, but that's that's different. So, uh, you know, if, if there's anything I can do to help other people, uh, you know, if there's small businesses that, that need some help during this time and they just need somebody to talk to, uh, I, I'm, I'm not gonna charge anything right now. Um, I'd be happy to, to do what I can. Uh, you know, it's, it may just be somebody who needs an ear, uh, but um, this will pass. Uh, Amen. You know, one of my gator bites was good times never last and bad times never last. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people in my BNI chapters told me, you know, they were so caught up in the economic expansion, they thought nothing would ever change. And uh, you know, my uh, comments that, hey, you need to lay up some hay for the winter, I think went unheeded and <laughs> we're suffering now. Yeah. Um, but this bad time will pass too. And the real question for people is going to be, what did you learn from it? Um, it's gonna, and I think this is a, an event that is similar to the Great Depression in that it will change people's behavior for decades to come. Mm -hmm. I think in general, people will be more frugal, they'll save more, um, they'll be more conscious of things like washing hands, the, the virtual economy is going to really take off, there's going to be a, a ton more of people getting used to the whole idea of Zoom and Skype and working from home and all those things that a lot of people resisted, but that this thing forced them into it. Um, it's it's like a lot of things. When you make a mistake, the real question is, what did you learn from it, and what are you going to do to prevent it from happening again? Roy, that was awesome. I've known you for 15 years and learned a bunch uh, today. This was great. Great uh, book recommendations, not only your own, but of others. And what a great advice that your dad gave you. It's, uh, and it's still true today that you got to admit what you're wrong and admit your mistakes. You, you need to treat everybody the same. And I, I've always seen you walk that walk. You, you walk that advice that your dad gave you back in the day. And a traveler, a tennis player, and uh, I think the world is better because you dwelt upon it. And I appreciate your friendship. And likewise, you, you made a wonderful contribution to Charleston and Greenville. I'm when, wondering when you're going to go national and just see a big time. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's a lot of work. I'm a bit of a dictator too. I do it because uh, I don't, I don't, I don't have like a, a board, you know, so uh, it is a big, uh, it, we'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Just wanted to plant a seed. Uh, well, I'm taking you with me. Okay. I'm going to need some help. If, uh, if I do. So thank you so much uh, for everything, for your mentorship, your leadership, and for participating today. Thanks, Robert. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.